AEW New Japan pay-per-view, June 26th at the United Center in Chicago. We'll tell you all about that here today. And uh, all of the news coming out of AEW Dynamite. No spoilers for the Rampage show on Friday, but it's a big edition of Rampage. And uh, we will have Fauntleroy going down the lineup for the show. Non-spoiler lineup later on here in this program. And he, I'm going to get him on the air. It's coming. We'll see if I can do it today. Want to wish a big uh, congratulations to Killer Cross and Scarlet Bordeaux. Now Scarlet Cross, or perhaps Killer Bordeaux. They're married. A couple announced on Wednesday they had eloped in Alaska recently. I wrote here that uh, we flew to Alaska, hopped on a helicopter, flew to a glacier for a very private ceremony. Pretty sure there weren't a lot of people there on that glacier. We initially weren't going to share the footage, but after further discussing, we'd actually like to do so. Thank you so much for all the support we get from you all. Whether you're a fan, friend, or family, you have all participated in bringing joy into our lives. You can check it out on social media. And then, of course, they wrestled for Anchorage, Alaska's Wrestle Pro Alaska on April 9th. So congratulations to them. Got all the other news to get into here today. NXT ratings, Pat McAfee. Maybe getting another gig. AW video game, your full AW Dynamite report, and so much more. Back in a moment to kick it off, Wrestling Observer Live. Observer.com. Almost didn't make it back here. Damn. I'm trying to find uh, old Fauntleroy. Oh, yeah? This little sh- shibbity doo. Slippery little thing, he's, isn't he? He's hiding, but mm. uh, his day's coming. He's going to poke himself Even out to, a little bit later. I may have to handcuff him like Wardlow. Handcuff him to this chair. You're going to put hands on Fauntleroy? Man. Put hands on him. I just handcuff him. Yeah. Well, how are you going to, you know, get him down there and get him, you know. <laughs> He's, He's not big. <laughs> it's not I'm like sure, I have to sure physically not. accost him. All right. Uh, let's talk about the news. The Forbidden Door is wide open. It says here at WrestlingObserver.com. A joint AEW New Japan pay-per-view set for Sunday, June 26th at the United Center in Chicago. They sure love that Chicago. The announcement of AEW versus New Japan Forbidden Door was made during last night's Dynamite episode after being hyped for the past week on AEW programming. Tony Khan and New Japan president Takami Obari appeared together on Dynamite to announce the pay-per-view, but were interrupted by Adam Cole and Jay White. Cole and White delivered the details of the event, Cole adding he will face Ishii on this week's AEW Rampage. No talent or match announcements have been made for Forbidden Door, but Tony Khan told Sports Illustrated the pay-per-view will feature matches with AEW talent facing off against New Japan talent. Tickets for the show will go on sale Friday, May 6th at 11 a.m. The event will air on traditional pay-per-view and the Bleacher Report app in the United States and on Fight TV for international customers. It will take place during what is typically a lull in New Japan's schedule between Dominion and the G1 Tournament. Top talent like Okada, Tanahashi, and Naito will likely be able to work the show. Okada... Tanahashi and Naito did not work last week's New Japan event in Chicago, although Tanahashi has advertised for dates in Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia next month. Okada is advertised only for Washington. So, where to begin here? When AEW first started, and everybody wanted to see all the New Japan talent in AEW, well, there were a lot of problems. Stemming from the treatment of uh, many of the AEW stars by New Japan. There's a lot of heat. And uh, Harold May ended up being removed from power. And uh, once that happened, things started to uh, warm up a little between the two sides. And uh, then we started to uh, slowly see one or two guys show up here or there. And uh, essentially what has happened is uh, things are much better now. And so what we have is a joint show. And if you listen to Observer Radio last night, Dave did a lot of fantasy booking about what we might see on the show. And uh, the reality is you're going to see the top names 
but uh, there, I was talking to somebody there last night, and there's pretty much an acknowledgement that fans are going to be doing a lot of fantasy booking, and uh, you know they're probably going to have some disappointment because everyone's going to just go all hog wild on every dream match they've ever wanted to see, and uh, you're not going to get all of those, but you're going to get a New Japan AEW show with the top stars. And uh, when all is said and done, you're probably going to be pretty happy with how everything turns out. But you're not going to get absolutely everything that you want, every dream match, because they can't. There is obviously some, there's going to be politics at work here, because you've got two companies, and, you know, New Japan's not going to go in there to lose every match, and AEW's not going to go in there to lose every match, and AEW's going to want guys that will be protected, and New Japan is going to want guys that are going to be protected, but uh, it will, I mean, for all I know, they already have the entire card all worked out between the two sides because uh, I don't know when, I don't know when this deal came about, but, you know, as I've talked about for a while here, this may be that second big announcement that Tony had in his pocket uh, several weeks ago when he announced there was going to be a big announcement and it ended up being the Ring of Honor announcement. But when he announced there would be an announcement, that deal wasn't made. So they had a backup announcement. It may have been this. So it's possible I mean, especially if you look at the booking of New Japan, it's possible they already have a full card, all the winners, and everything. We're not going into this blind and, and probably having to figure it out here. But I think you're going to see a lot of really fun matches. The crowd seemed jazzed about it last night. I think it's going to be a really, really fun show, and people there are are very excited about it because you know a lot of the top stars have worked at Japan before, and uh, although things went sour under Harold May, I mean, they loved working New Japan. And people are excited to go there. People are excited to come here. And I think it's going to work out great for everybody involved. Yeah, and if you're a wrestling fan, I don't know how you can't be happy about this. And even though things went south under Harold May with the relationship, the reality is COVID sealed that deal no matter who would have been in charge. And we're finally going to get to see guys. You know, we've seen, you know, a couple of guys come over, but to this level on this type of showcase, you know, it, it's it's basically impressive and unprecedented. It's the very least since the last ROH show, but this is going to be, you know, that show at Madison Square Garden. I'm not saying on steroids, but it's going to be big, and it's also going to be a lot of moving parts too, because you still have Fukuoka coming up for New Japan at the beginning of May. You have. Uh, AEW's pay-per-view coming at the end of the month and then Dominion before anything happens. So you could see titles change. You could see some situations change. And I think we are going to get to see some really good one-on-one -on -one matchups, you know, AEW versus New Japan. But I'm also looking forward to some combinations like seeing Andrade back with Naito because I could handle Naito in an eight man tag team match showing off LIJ against somebody, you know, the, you know, whoever it would be for, for AEW and, and have a mix of guys from AEW new Japan. So there's a lot you can do with this show. There's going to be a lot of expectations and, you know, again, it's just going to be an exciting couple of months here leading into it. Okay. Now there's an incident last week where I lost my mind. And uh, attempted some gory self mutilation. Trini, stop that! No, I don't believe my own eyes anymore. What, what I what, what I think I see, they're telling me I didn't see. All right, <laughs> but that's what happened. Okay, so seven days ago, seven days ago, he shaved his own head. He goes back here. I swear to God, his hair's back again. <laughs> well, like, nothing happened. I'm trying to hang on. I'm trying. To Desperately to grip on reality, and every time I, I, every time I think I'm there, every time I think I'm safe and stable, Duke Hudson's hair changes again. His motivation changes again. Something about Dante Chen. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.